Welcome to The Explainer. Think about it. Every single day, huge decisions about our health, our environment, and our safety are made based on a single number. Today, we're going to peel back the curtain and look at the invisible rules that make sure that number is one you can absolutely trust. So let's say this is a lab result. Just a number, 247. Now, this could be anything. Your cholesterol, a blood sugar reading, maybe even an environmental safety measure. It's a really critical piece of information. But here's the million-dollar question. Can you actually trust it? I mean, unlike, say, a car or a phone, you can't just look at a number and see if it's good quality. There's no scratch or dent, so how does anyone know for sure? In this explainer, we're diving deep into the brilliant statistical system known as quality control, or QC. We're going to see how a simple chart completely changed how labs work, the tricky problem that it created, and then the elegant set of rules that were developed to solve it. It's all about making sure the numbers that guide our lives are rock solid. All right, let's get into it. The whole thing really starts with this fundamental challenge of looking at one single lonely number, just like our 247. And that's the core issue, right? A number has no obvious signs that something went wrong. So to figure out if 247 is a valid result, we need some context. We have to know what we should expect to see. And that leads us to the first really ingenious solution. And it came from the world of manufacturing, of all places, before finding its perfect home right inside the clinical laboratory. Yeah, this idea started way back in the 1930s at Bell Labs. They were using these charts to make sure their factory products were consistent. But then, almost 20 years later, a couple of doctors, Levy and Jennings, had this light bulb moment. They realized the same idea could completely revolutionize medicine. Their version, the Levy-Jennings chart, is now like the bedrock of lab quality control. So how does it work? Well, it's pretty clever. A lab takes a special sample that has a known, stable result. We call that a control. They test it, and then they plot that single result on this chart. The chart already shows the control's average value from tons of past tests, and it has these lines that mark the boundaries of what's considered normal, random variation. It's just a super simple visual way to see if your whole testing system is behaving like it's supposed to. And the reason this all works is because of a basic statistical rule. Just think of standard deviation as one unit of normal wobble. When a test is working perfectly, you'd expect almost all the results, like 95% of them, to land within two of these wobble units from the average. So if you get a result that falls way out past three units, that's incredibly rare. It's a huge red flag that something is wrong with the test itself. But, you know, every great solution seems to create a new problem, right? And this powerful new tool created its own dilemma. Figuring out where to draw the line for action, well, it turned into a classic Goldilocks problem. See, if you set your limits too tight, let's say at two standard deviations, your alarm is going to go off all the time. About one in every 20 perfectly good runs will get flagged, just by random chance. That wastes a ton of time and money. But if you set the limits too wide at three standard deviations, you'll barely get any false alarms, but you run the risk of missing smaller errors that could still be really important for a patient's diagnosis. One was too hot, one was too cold, neither was just right. So clearly, labs needed a smarter system, something that could catch the real problems without drowning everyone in false alarms. And this is where our hero, a statistician named Dr. James Westgard, enters the story. And you know, he explained his whole sophisticated statistical system with what is probably the best analogy I've ever heard. He talked about setting a curfew for his daughter. It wasn't about one single time she had to be home. It was about the pattern. Being out really, really late one time, that's a problem. But so was being moderately late two nights in a row, or just a little bit late four nights in a row. And that's the absolute genius of his multi-rule system. Instead of one single rigid rule, you use a whole combination of rules. The system is looking for different patterns in the data, where each pattern points to a different kind of problem. You get the best of both worlds. You catch the important errors, but you don't have all those annoying false alarms. All right, so let's open up the playbook and see how this all comes together to build a much more intelligent quality control system. This is where the system gets really, really smart. It's not just about monitoring. 
it's practically a diagnostic tool. That one twos rule, that's now a yellow light. It's a warning that says, hey, check this data carefully. But other rule breaks are red lights that stop the whole process. For instance, one single wild result way off the mean that probably points to a random error, like an air bubble got in the sample. But two results in a row that are both a little too high, that suggests something systematic is wrong, like the machine itself is slowly drifting out of calibration. Different patterns tell you about different problems. Okay, so at this point you might be thinking, this is all cool lab stuff, but why should this complex system of rules matter to me outside the lab? Well, because it reveals this incredibly powerful strategy for keeping us safe in almost any complex system. And this really shows you the bigger picture. The WestGuard system works just like a doctor making a diagnosis. They might use a really sensitive screening test first. That's our 1-2-S warning rule. If that comes back with a maybe, they follow up with a much more specific test to confirm if there's really a problem. And that's like our 2-2-S or 1-3's rejection rules. It's this beautiful strategy that balances finding every possible issue without overreacting to every little false signal. When you boil it all down, this whole quest for quality is really this disciplined four-step dance. You get your stable materials, you figure out your baseline for what's normal, you pick the right rules to watch for trouble, and then you just monitor constantly, ready to react the second a pattern tells you something isn't right. So the next time you see a simple number on a report, just remember the invisible intelligent system that's standing right behind it. The West Guard rules are this powerful reminder that behind every single trustworthy piece of data, there is a hidden world of rigor and logic and care, all working to make sure the results that guide our lives are results we can all believe in.